It's an absolute pleasure to be here speaking about something that uh, really matters uh, to, to business and to small business generally. Now, I'm sitting in an airport, so I apologise if there's sort of announcements for flights, but we don't have many of those anymore, so maybe that won't be as bad as it normally would be. But, uh, and Daniela is going to um, change the slides for me. Uh, so we might go to the first slide. Um, and I think going to the first slide is fundamental because let's be fair, if the COVID-19 crisis has taught us anything, it's fundamentally that the future is digital, but more, and as importantly, it's about cash flow. So although many of us have been working on e invoicing for a long time, um, I suppose COVID, if there's been an upside for COVID, it's that, uh, that we now know that there is no choice but to go down the digital um, path. And if we want to do something about cash flow generally, payment times, being paid quicker, a range of other things that I'll talk about in a minute, um, e-invoicing is, uh, is fundamental uh, to that. In fact, you know, um, what's happened during COVID in the small business space is that, the, that um, that's fine, go, go to that next one, Danielle is that um, uh, payment times have got worse, um, not surprisingly, but still payment times uh, have got worse. But small businesses have digitised, have probably done about 10 years worth of digitisation in, uh, in 12 months. And fundamentally, because they've had to, uh, the businesses that have done well are the ones that have moved online, that are communicating with their customers, uh, on online uh, that are selling their products and their services, uh, are using um, social media efficiently and so on and so forth. But let's have a bit of a look at the whole issue of, of cash flow um, and invoices generally. Um, many of you will know these figures pretty well. They're a couple of years old now, but they won't have changed much. Uh, you know, 1.2 billion um, invoices exchanged each year in Australia. But the thing that's really interesting here is why are businesses paid late? Well, 20% of invoices go to the wrong person. So, you know, whether it's it's in snail mail or, or, um, or email, they, they go to the wrong place. 30% uh, of incorrect information, so the, the payment will be slowed down. And the work that was done uh, back in the day, a few years ago, but I'm sure, again, it hasn't changed that much. The cost of a paper invoice, $30.87. A PDF invoice, $27.97. And an e-invoice, $9.18. So the figures that we put to the... Um, Sorry, oh, um, sorry, just it's a problem of an of, of a uh, That's okay, uh, of, of an airport. Um, so the, the figures that we put to Treasury a number of years ago to convince them that this was a good thing um, showed a serious, serious uh, positive to the Australian economy. And uh, let's be fair, now we need that uh, that you know those that uh, benefits to the Australian economy more than uh, ever before. Um, I think that the, the, one, the, the point I wanted to make is that regularly we uh, talk to small businesses and they'll say things like, oh, we already do e-invoicing. We send invoices uh, by um, uh, email and we send PDFs via e uh, email. So there's still a lack of real knowledge about what e-invoicing is. Uh, and that's important. So next slide there would be good. Um, so just quickly, you know, the benefits of e-invoicing for business generally, but in the SME space particularly, faster payments are the thing that, that matters most, which of course is about cash flow. Security really matters, um, and that and the importance of that is escalating. The fact that uh, you overcome some of those issues that I spoke about on the last slide of, a, of invoices going to the wrong person, uh, that they're not being, there's something wrong with the invoice and it can be something pretty minor that can slow down payment. So look, they re, it reduces costs, it increases productivity uh, 
And the thing that is raising in, in importance here is the issue around cyber risk. So let's just go to the next slide here. Thanks. So these are scam watch figures, which come from the ACCC. If you have a look at the thing right at the top, um, it's false billing now, you know, above, you know, a range of the, the, uh, the scams that you know, we're a bit more used to. So now, you know, uh, um, cyber criminals in, uh, intercepting uh, invoices, you know, changing BSB numbers, you know, there's uh, huge numbers of way this, ways this is done, but you can see now it's the thing that's causing the most issues. And just recent data in terms of cyber, uh, um, cyber crimes or cyber invasions on uh, uh, on small on business generally, uh, two out of every five um, cyber um, crimes, shall we say, or cyber cyber incursions are happening on small businesses. So small businesses now are you know right in um, in the headlights, shall we say, for cyber criminals simply because their levels of security um, are, are lower. Uh, so um, e-invoicing, a real positive in, in this space. So let's go to the next slide. Um, but what, so what are the challenges? Why hasn't it just happened? Um, well, it should have just happened. I'm sure Mark will talk about that, that in a minute. But, you know, it is a change. You do need to, to move your systems, uh, up until recently, there was a perception that, you know, that e-invoicing was a real, um, uh, was difficult to do. And of course, now with um, Myob, um, Xero, other software um, um, accountancy packages that's, that the majority of small businesses have got, uh, are, will be, um, or are, depends on the, the company, e-invoice enables. So, a range of the, the concerns, you know, in this space are, are now overcome. But I think the thing I should have put down at the bottom here is the challenges is, is, is knowledge in the small business space of what e-invoicing is. I made the point about, you know, perception that a PDF sent on the email was somehow, you know, e-invoicing. And so I think we've got an education issue in terms of the challenges generally. So next one, Danielle. Um, payment times is a huge, huge issue uh, in the business space generally. When, when I took over this role um, five years ago, like nearly exactly five years ago, we went out to, sm to the small business community and just to, my office handles businesses with less than 100 employees. That's 99% of businesses. Um, in Australia, 2.3 million trading businesses fall into that space. So it's lots. Um, we've, I thought that um, businesses would say, well, Kate, what we want you to focus on is, you know, industrial relations, a whole range of those sort of the tax system and so on. But the thing that was right up at the top of concern for small businesses was, uh, was payment times. And that was, you know, big businesses, governments and so on, paying small businesses really slowly. This, um, this piece of research was done a couple of years ago, but, uh, you know, it found that, and this was, I think there was 10 million invoices were looked at for this, re this piece of research. So, it's the, you know, it's the biggest piece of research that's been done and found that 53% of invoices were paid late. The average lateness was um, was 23 days. Um, the the amount of money tied up in that in those invoices was 115 billion. You know, if they were paid on time, seven billion dollars more into the economy. You know, all of these these um, figures um, they 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 they're compelling, but you have to remember what this actually means in, bus in small business land. I know that I've spoken to some of the macro economists in Treasury over the years and they've said, yeah, Kate, but, you know, you pay quicker and it's a one-off hit. But, of course, it's not a one-off hit. 
in a, in small business land because you have to pay your staff, you know, weekly or fortnightly. You have to pay your landlord. You have to pay your suppliers. You don't get to pay them late um, uh, inside the law. I mean, in fact, you can't pay them late. Um, and so if you're sweating on bills being paid and they're being paid late, and that 23 days is um, 23 days longer than usually 30 days, which is a normal scenario. So you're talking, you know, quite a number of, of uh, quite a long time outside a normal, you know, 30 days or less payment times. It means that small businesses aren't in a position to invest in their business, you know, to buy that extra stock, to get involved, you know, to, to take up a particular, you know, special or invest because you're just never sure about when you're going to get paid uh, and that impacts upon businesses' capacity uh, to, to grow their business and to invest in their business. So this stuff really, really matters. So let's just go to the next slide. Um, as I said, that particular, um, uh, thanks, um, that particular um, data was a couple of years old. This is um, a media, this is data right now from uh, Creditor Watch just came out in the last couple of days for January, uh, the January figures. And you can see the payment times got worse in 12 out of 19 sectors. You can see the, the first column is days overdue in January last year. And now you can see the days overdue in January uh, this year and you know last um, last month, uh, you know this is this is a huge huge problem uh, for for businesses generally. So let's go to the next one. Thanks. Um, so um, what does all this mean? Well, you know, the great bit about e invoicing is as you know, there's no you know um, it's more efficient, it's quicker. The federal government, and for that matter, New South Wales government and others have indicated that uh, they will pay in five days um, if, uh, um, on the basis of e-invoicing being used, which is fantastic um, and fundamentally changes the game for small businesses generally. The other, the, I wanted to just talk about global for a moment because the other feedback I often get from business even big businesses, which should, you know, should know better, but, but certainly from small business and government is somehow, you know, oh, okay, this is a big change, you know, it's something that, you know, is, is really hard. Australia is so far behind the, ga the game on this um, that, you know, we've got to realise that, you know, s s places like, you know, lots of countries in South America, um, Italy, um, the Scandinavian countries, whole range of places, and this is just this was just a you know a few to show that, um, particularly in the business to government space, um, the, you know, e invoicing is standard practice and is um, being adopted globally really quickly. Now it is great that um, Australia is is starting to catch up. So can I go to the next slide, Daniela? That'd be great. Um, okay, so what's happening with e-invoicing in Australia? And I'm sure other speakers will speak more about that. Um, after lots of uh, agony, Mark, you can talk about agony. Um, the PEPL um, online framework was adopted in 2019. And now we've got a commitment by the federal government to that uh, that federal government agencies will uh, be will have to use um, e invoicing by July next year. And I was really pleased to see um, my old Greg Ellis say, "Look, let's bring that forward and let's uh, let's see the biz the business to business um, relationship sped up as well because there's no commitment in that space um, at all." So. It won't be at this stage until the middle of next year for us to see the business to government transaction mandated. Uh, but um, I would agree with my ob that, uh, you know, uh, pulling that forward 
as, as, as far as we can to help speed up the economy, to help with uh, the economic recovery that we all need so much. And uh, let's mandate business to business transactions as well. Next one, next slide. Um, these are some mild figures of, you know, the, of businesses, you know, 53% of businesses, 61% of sole traders are calling for business to business invoicing, e-invoicing to be mandated. Um, that figure, the 43% the, the of small businesses have heard about e-invoicing. Unfortunately, there's the 57% that haven't, and we've got a chunk of work to do in that, in that space. Um, the ones that know about it and understand e-invoicing understand just what a time saver it is and how much time it will, it, it will save. Um, um, it's certainly true that businesses, that businesses that are digitally enabled um, are much more likely to understand uh, the, the issues surrounding uh, e-invoicing generally. But, you know, again, as I said, what's happened over the last 12 months is significantly more businesses are now digitally enabled. Um, that's happening really quickly and it's happening for, a, well, you know, for obviously, you know, um, absolute necessity to keep their businesses afloat during shutdowns and, and the COVID issue. But also there have been other things that happened before COVID, things like single touch payroll being mandated. You know, for small for businesses, they have to be using single touch uh, payroll, which means you need to be sending your uh, information uh, about your um, PAYG withholding and superannuation um, electronically, not in a PDF, electronically to the ATO. Um, the majority of um, bigger, middle-sized to bigger businesses um, are on, are, are, have adopted because legislatively they have to, it's the law, but it's also the law for smaller businesses some smaller businesses are still using their accountants or their bookkeepers to do it for them, but uh, the time is running out for those sort of uh, um, exemptions. So everyone needs to have a level of, uh, of digital capacity inside their business and being able to use e-invoicing for that purpose. But I just want to um, talk a bit about, just really briefly, that E-invoicing is really important. It's important for all the reasons I've talked about, but it's part of a broader digital um, future for business, which includes, you know, um, integrating e-invoicing with procurement, you know, with financing, with inventory control, you know, with logistics, you know, and in the global space with trade facilitation, a whole range of things. And all of this improves productivity cuts your costs and makes your business more competitive. And that's, for me, what this is about. Um, so um, that would be the last slide, I think. So I'm available for questions. And I think there's a couple, Danielle, that you've um, put in yes. place. Yes, we've got a couple of minutes. Um, so thank you for that, Kate. Um, the first question that came through uh, for when people were registering for the event was, is there a negative or positive impact in using e-invoicing? Look, as I, as I said, um, I, I mean, I think it's only positive now. You know, possibly, you know, when businesses weren't um, as digitised as they are now, when the MyOBS and the Zeros and, you know, the other um, platforms weren't e-invoicing enabled and, and Pebble uh, enabled, you know, when, when all of that infrastructure wasn't there, I accept the challenges of, of adoption were high. Now those aren't there. And so it's it's hard to see the negatives. And the, the point I made in the presentation about the importance of security and, uh, and the cyber issues, the cyber crime issues in this space, um, to me have really escalated in yeah. importance uh, from the times when we were talking about e-invoicing um, you know, a few years ago, you know, this is, this is now major, a major issue for small businesses. So um, for me, the positive, it's, 
there are only positives uh, in this space. I haven't spoken as much as I, I I'm hopefully others will on uh, on the business to business um, arena. I think there's going to be some um, interesting issues for uh, some of the bigger uh, the biggest bigger businesses that already have their uh, their own systems mm -hmm. in place um, and uh, um, and uh, have been reticent to move to the Pebble standard because it's not in line with their proprietary uh, um, processes. Uh, but I think that's why, um, possi you know, doing what a number of countries have done, and that is to mandate business to business as well as government to business is pretty important here. Um, you know, I've, I've spoken, I, for me, the two major problems that, solved here um you know our payment times yeah. and and cyber stuff but the, on the last slide i made the point that businesses who understand this space reckon it will um you know it will save them the equivalent of a working week each year um taking into account how time poor smes are this is huge. That's a week you could spend with your family. It's a week you could spend investing in your business. Um, this is this is big. So reducing, um, can we say red tape, but reducing actual time and freeing up time to, you know, maybe be a bit more strategic in your business or, you know, again, spending time with your family, all the things you really want to do is pretty important here in, in, in my view. Um, I think the, what was the last question, Danielle? I forgot. Oh, oh the last is, question about funding. What are your, what's your view Well, on that? you know, there's two ways of looking at this. If government, I think the first thing government's got to do is actually get, you know, get off their backsides and get e-invoicing really happening and incentivising it by really quick payment times. We talk about five days, but there's nothing to stop it being immediate. Um, so, you know, um, government paying quickly really, you know, is a funding benefit, certainly for the, for the business perspective. But um, it is, I think it's, it's actually in the interests of governments generally to hype up their, uh, their incentives and these could possibly be tax incentives to uh, to, to the transition to e-invoicing because it will deliver such a benefit to the economy at a time when we desperately need it. Now we're seeing some state governments, um, New South Wales just in the last week, I think Victoria as well, coming up with um, small grants for digitisation in the space. So um, let's hope uh, e-invoicing is very much a part of that. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think there's more work to be done there, but mostly small businesses particularly will respond to being paid quicker, which is the reason the big businesses, you know, that, that have lots of suppliers in the small business space really need to be part of that. You know, the Woolworths, the Coles, the, you know, the, the large operators in, you know, in transport and all sorts of things. Yes. Um, if we can speed up payment times in this country, uh, we can change the game for lots of small businesses. So thank you, Danielle.